Twitter ads offers a variety of ad formats, and pretty much every single one of these are going to be better than using a promoted tweet. But before you create an ad, it's probably good to know what the specs are for each ad format just so you can proactively get your creative ready. So in this video, I'm not going to be able to cover every single variation because Twitter actually has a good amount. I'm just going to go over some of the more popular ad formats within Twitter and then show you the specs that Twitter recommends to make sure that your creative and your ads look best within your campaigns. We can see I'm in the main Twitter ads manager interface and probably the easiest way to start creating tweets is to go into your top navigation under creatives and then click on tweet composer. Now within this video, I'm going to be jumping back and forth a little bit because the tweet composer doesn't really show you a lot of the ad formats. It's just going to show you the core portion of the ad. But if we choose this particular tweet that we're creating in one of the various campaign objectives that Twitter has, there will be differences on how this tweet that we're creating actually looks. So again, I will be jumping back and forth so we can get a better understanding of how these tweets could appear in a variety of different Twitter ads campaign objectives. The first portion of this video will be covering most of the promoted ads. The most basic ad format in Twitter would be a promoted text ad. And pretty much what I'm using as the demo text is the rule for any promoted tweet. The maximum amount of characters you can have in a promoted tweet is 280 characters. But if you choose to have a link within your promoted ad, like I did by pasting the paid media pros URL, the character limit decreases by 23 characters. So then your new maximum will be 257 characters. If you look at the blue circle in the lower right hand corner of the text portion, it shows that we're using about 75% of the maximum character limit. If you're on Twitter a lot organically, you get that same circle character limit indicator. So you could create just a basic text tweet to use for your Twitter ads. But we see down below, we have options for other creatives. Let me go ahead and add an image. And if I scroll down, we see a few different menu options. The default option will be a website card type. If you want to know more about website cards for promoted tweets, Michelle already made a video, which you can watch right here. And most likely that is going to be the option that you would want. But we do see that there's app or have no card at all. Since the purpose of this video is to go over the ad specs, I'm going to skip over the card type sections for each of these ad formats. So I want to drop down to the media and just add my photo right away. Then I'll choose my file, still one of my favorite photos. Everything I mentioned about the promoted text guidelines pertains to a promoted image format as well. For the image, you may have seen it before I actually chose the specific file, but you can upload a ping or a JPEG image. Twitter recommends having a width of at least 600 pixels and the height could be whatever. But if the height is more than the width, then Twitter will crop your image to a one to one square ratio. And you can see down below, you'll have some options to manually crop it, but pretty much stick to these ratios. That was the image portion, but I'm going to cancel out of this. And then we can look at adding a video. I kind of jumped over the uploaded portion for a little bit, but that's okay. Just like a promoted text or promoted image, the maximum 280 character length applies to video as well. And every link you add will decrease the character count by 23 characters. If I scroll down a little bit, we can see we can add specific images from our library. And even though I say our, this is my personal account. But if I scroll back up, I can then go over the actual ratios and specs for these videos. The video ratio needs to be 16 by nine or a one to one square ratio. The one to one ratio is recommended since it will always render as a square for all devices. The minimum one to one ratio is 600 by 600, but 1200 by 1200 is the recommended size. Just like the promoted photos that I mentioned, if your height is more than the width, the video will be cropped to a one to one ratio. So if you like control and want to know exactly how it's going to appear, make sure you already have the 16 by nine or one to one ratios in place. We can see in the drag and drop text on the screen right now, an MOV or MP4 files are the only accepted video file types. And the file size for your video can be a maximum of one gigabyte. The video length should be 15 seconds or less. But if you are choosing website click campaign objectives, you can have a video up to two minutes and 20 seconds. The next option we can go over is carousel. And if you look at the little bit of description underneath the carousel title, you can see that you can have two to six photos or videos. And to clarify, you cannot combine them. You will have to choose only photos or only videos. If we scroll down to our media, let's add a few options. It's yelling at me because I only have one media selected. Unfortunately, you have to select them one by one. You can't just highlight two to six of them and create them all within one media. So we'll have to go and add another one. And there we go. My carousel is pretty much ready. If you see these two lines, I can click and grab 
and switch the order that I would like the carousel images to appear. I strongly feel that the one-to-one -one ratio is the easiest to do with carousel and it also looks the best. But you also can have a 1.91 to 1 ratio if you choose. We see up above for the website URL portion for a carousel card. You can only have one web or one app destination for all cards. That's unlike many of the other carousel formats we've talked about in the other paid social channels, where most of them let you customize the URL per carousel image. But for Twitter, it's one for the entire ad. They will share the same website or app destination URL. Now I quick jump back to the photo or video creative, but if you look at the card type, I switched it to app. And if you look in the preview to the right, you will see that the preview has changed. If the user does not have your app installed, the call to action will default to install, like we see right here. The call to action will default to open if the app is already installed on the user's device. But if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that we can specify what we want the call to action to be. And then we can see we can choose the particular app store and the platform depending on which app you're promoting. For an app card, the tweet copy rules that I mentioned in the very beginning will stay the same. Image ratios will be slightly different. For an image app card, you can have the 1.91 to 1 image ratio. Pretty much comes out to 800 by 418 pixels, but you can also have a 1 to 1 image, which should be around an 800 to 800 pixel ratio. For static images, ping and JPEG is the preferred file. If you choose to add a GIF or GIF, however you say it, and that GIF is animated, Twitter will only render it as a static image, and you will not get to choose which frame that static image is. So if you want to have that control, stick to a ping or a JPEG. One of the more popular campaign objectives in Twitter ads, and the ones that we get questions about a lot, is for followers campaigns. We do have a more in-depth video going over followers campaigns, which you can watch right here. But since this video is about ad formats and specs, we can talk a little bit about that one right now. The best type of tweet to create for a followers campaign when you are in the Tweet Composer is a text-only tweet. Since you can select previous created tweets when building the campaign, feel free to choose a tweet with an image or a video in your followers campaign. However, the image or video for those tweets will not render within this campaign type. The only thing that will appear is your tweet text and then a follow call to action button. I'm refreshing to another campaign creation, and if you're choosing a campaign objective of app installs or website clicks, you will have access to expand to the Twitter audience platform. And as we head into our ad group details, you can see Twitter audience platform on the left hand side, pretty much skipping over most of the ad group creation. By default, this setting will be turned on. I know a lot of advertisers like to turn it off. But if you do want to expand your reach on the audience platform and you leave that toggle on, you will see there are different ad formats and different ad sizes that can be a nice addition to your current tweets that you are creating. Just understand that these formats have different ad sizes. So if I scroll down a little bit more to the creative section, you can see that you can choose tweets, but then you can also choose display creatives. And then if you choose and go down to sizes, you will get the exact dimensions that you would need to upload to satisfy each one of these ad spaces. It's easy enough to just go to your media library and then upload the proper ad sizes for the audience platform. And then you can head back to your campaign where you'll be able to select those specific images that you have uploaded. There are a few more ad formats within the Twitter ads platform. But if you're brand new to Twitter ads or you don't use it that often, odds are everything that I cover today will help you get your Twitter ads up and running. Just like any paid media platform that we use, we recommend testing a variety of ad formats. You never know which type of ad format will really capture a user's attention. And depending on the goal of your campaign, certain ad formats may be more successful at driving better traffic, or certain ad formats could be better at driving conversions. You won't know until you test most of them out. Hopefully this video gave you an understanding of how you can create different types of ad formats and the cards that can go along with those formats. If you have any questions about the Twitter ad specs, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.